Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I will be looking at the House of Medici and the various Grand Dukes of Tuscany as well as the Lords of Florence before them. Um, now last week I took a week off uh, because I was quite busy, however I have been doing um, a lot of chart work um, in the meantime. So do stay, uh, do stay tuned for that. Um, in fact, I'm working on a project which is uh, the Crusader States. So you know the kings of Jerusalem, the princes of Antioch, etc. Um, but the reason why I'm not showing that today is because it's not completed to a good enough standard. Um, so instead, I thought I would uh, make another chart to show in a video, and this is the House of Medici, which I expect most people have heard of. Um, but if you haven't, this house ruled uh, Tuscany in the Renaissance period, really into the early modern period. Um, so, the first sort of prominent member of the house of Medici was Salvestro, and he was a Gionfalinieri, which is more or less like the, uh, the house, uh, or sorry, the speaker of the house in uh, British politics. Um, so, I wouldn't say he was in charge of things, but he was certainly uh, an important figure uh, in the Signoria, which was the Parliament in Florence. Of course, Florence at this time was a republic, and while I might use the term Lord of Florence, um, like here, uh, that doesn't mean that this member was actually um, formally in charge of Florence. So, for instance, Cosimo I never knew himself as the Lord of Florence, uh, but he was the de facto uh, Lord of Florence. Anyway, Salvestro was still a commoner, um, and sometime, uh, sometime after that, a distant cousin named Giovanni, who was a wool merchant, founded a bank. Uh, and he founded that in 1397, and that was the bank of Medici. Uh, now Giovanni was not only a good businessman but he was also a shrewd politician and he was a member of the Priori and Signoria in Florence. Uh, so he knew when to invest and when not to invest and where to invest. Uh, so at the time there was a schism going on in the Catholic Church where there were several popes uh, at one point and he funded um, a man, who was a pirate actually, called Belisari Cosa, to uh, become Pope John the Twenty Third. Uh, and Giovanni was able to do that with the little money he had. Uh, and when all of the cardinals had been bribed enough uh, into electing Belisari Cosa as John the Twenty Third, um, John the Twenty Third made Giovanni the head of the uh, papal banks, which of course was a huge job because it meant that all of the different church donations throughout Europe and Christendom uh, were going to be coming through the Medici bank uh, and of course the Medici would line their pockets with some of that money. Um, however, Belisari Cosa was denounced as an anti-pope, uh, so he was anti-pope John the Twenty-Third, uh, and that's why the Pope in the 1960s was Pope John XXIII rather than Pope John XXIV. However, Giovanni was able to keep his uh, position as the treasurer to the papacy, uh, the head banker of the papacy, and um, he and his descendants would be extremely wealthy. Now, after Giovanni died, his son Cosimo became uh, the head of the bank. However, for the first five years uh, after Giovanni's death, Cosimo found it hard to establish himself because the nobles of the city of Florence, who were traditionally more wealthy but were losing their wealth and power, didn't like this new money uh, that was the, the Medici family. And so um, they exiled Cosimo under a man called Rinaldo degli Albizzi, and Cosimo was exiled to Venice. However, he was able to return, 
and he actually exiled um, many nobles, including Ronaldo degli Albizzi. So in one stroke, Cosimo had eliminated all of his rivals. Cosimo spent the next 30 years uh, in Florence, establishing his own power and his family's power, as well as funding many artworks and constructions throughout the city, such as Donatello's David uh, and, more famously, the Duomo in the city of Florence, which to this day is the largest brick dome in the world. Um, so that sets a trend for the later Medicis, uh, because virtually all Medicis were huge fans of the arts and funded them. After Cosimo died, he was named uh, Pater Padre, meaning Father of the Fatherland, and his son Piero took over. However, he was quite unpopular, and after Piero died of gout, he was succeeded by his two sons, who co-ruled the bank. However, Lorenzo was far more influential in the banking, and his brother Giuliano was a bit more um, of a womaniser. Um, and in fact, Giuliano would have an illegitimate son, who was called Giulio, and he will be relevant for later. However, Lorenzo um, was also despised, like his, uh, his grandfather, by the wealthy. Um, and in Lorenzo's case, he was despised by the Pazzi family. So the Pazzis, along with some other noble families, and even uh, the Pope's own nephew, uh, and that Pope was Sixtus IV, by the way, um, tried to assassinate Lorenzo in the cathedral during Mass on Easter Sunday, which was a huge no-no at the time. Uh, Lorenzo was able to escape this um, with only a few injuries, but his brother Giuliano died. However, for the conspirators, this backfired massively, as Lorenzo was able to assert himself not only as the head citizen, but as more or less the ruler of Florence. Uh, and that's why he's known as Lorenzo the Magnificent. Um, he had a big rivalry with Pope Sixtus IV. Of course, Sixtus IV had just, um, you know, ordered the murder of Lorenzo's brother. So they had, uh, uh, you know, quite a bit of beef, uh, as you might say. He married uh, Clarice Orsini from the Orsini family. Um, and I will make a video on these guys one day because it's uh, a really important and interesting Italian house. In fact, this was one of the first charts I've ever made. Uh, this is a new version of that chart, but um, yeah, I, I will do that soon. Um, anyway, after Sixtus died, Lorenzo married his daughter um, to Francesetto Cibo. And Francesetto Cibo's father was a cardinal. Uh, and if you're wondering why a cardinal had um, a son, that was because um, that cardinal had been a soldier beforehand, uh, before he was made a priest, rather. Um, and the reason why Lorenzo did this was because he was supporting uh, this man to be made pope. And uh, he was made Pope Innocent VIII. Uh, and that was good for Lorenzo, as he now had an ally in Rome. And just a, an interesting side note, uh, Maddalena and Francesetta Cibo's children uh, would become the um, Dukes of Massa and Carrara, which is still a duchy to this day. Okay, uh, now Lorenzo um, sort of had a downfall towards the end of his life, and he became quite unpopular. Um, and by the time he died, his family was more or less despised, and their bank had gone to ruins. In fact, they were quite poor. His son Piero came to the uh, throne of Florence. I suppose he didn't come to the throne of Florence, as there was no such thing, uh, but he came to power. However, he was unable to assert his dominance, and a monk by the name of Savonarola took power. Uh, now, Savonarola was quite a, a hardcore um, reformist, and he hated the whole um, Renaissance movement that was going on at the time, and how liberal it was. 
So he famously had the burning of the vanities where he burned loads of um, Greco-Roman and Greco-Roman inspired manuscripts, uh, most of which uh, were funded by the Medici. And he eventually ousted Piero and Piero and the Medici went into exile. Now, unfortunately for Savonarola, he ruled at a time that was very tumultuous in Italy, as the King of France wanted to assert his claim uh, over the King of Naples. And to get to Naples from France, you need to march through Florence. Um, so there was the Italian Wars, and there was a lot of turmoil throughout that. Uh, which is quite confusing, and there are some good videos on YouTube, um, which I'd recommend you watch if you are interested, uh, and I will link those in the description. Um, but that was when uh, Machiavelli was um, sort of quite prominent, although Machiavelli himself was exiled uh, eventually. Um, however, uh, the Holy League, which was a league of various Italian city-states, um, restored the Medici to power in 1512 uh, and they were led by Piero's brother Giovanni and Giovanni um, ruled Florence for a bit but then he was made Pope and obviously you can't be the Lord of Florence and the Pope at the same time so he gave his um, lordship to his brother uh, Giuliano the Duke of Numor uh, now, the reason why he is a duke is because he um, he went to France uh, a few years uh, prior and he was groomed by the French king um, into becoming the future king of Naples. Um, and the logic there was, you know, if they had um, an Italian ally, then that would be uh, very preferable for the French. However, Giuliano, uh, the Duke of Numor, died uh, prematurely. And then the power went to uh, Lorenzo, who was his nephew. He was the son of Piero the Unfortunate. Uh, Lorenzo was also the Duke of Urbino because he was quite ambitious and he got his uncle, the Pope, to install him as uh, the Duke of Urbino. But this meant that the family, um, who were traditionally the Dukes of Urbino, the Della Rovere's, uh, had quite a, a, a nasty conflict with Lorenzo and uh, a lot of Lorenzo's time as the Lord of Florence was spent dealing with uh, the rebellions in his own um, home city of Urbino. Now um, Lorenzo was ousted by his cousin Giulio and Giulio uh, then became Lord of Florence. Giulio was also a cardinal because he was the first cousin of the Pope. Um, however, Giulio was himself um, made the Pope a few years later, and he, like his cousin, had to uh, hand over the city of Florence to a relative. So he handed over uh, his power to Ippolito, who was the illegitimate son of Giuliano II. Uh, and Ippolito was quite popular, but um, he found it hard to govern by himself without the influence of his cousin. Uh, so eventually, uh, Ippolito was actually uh, stripped of um, Florence, and instead he was made a cardinal. He was made a cardinal because Ippolito rather fancied his distant cousin, Catherine de Medici, uh, and it was rumoured that they had had a love affair. So uh, Clement the seventh's logic was well, if I make Ippolito a cardinal, it's quite hard for him to carry on that relationship. Uh, but Ippolito uh, remained as an important diplomat for the Holy Roman Emperor until he was poisoned by his cousin and successor, Alessandro. Now, Alessandro might be the, uh, the most interesting figure on this chart um, because he was not only an important ruler of Florence and the first Duke of Florence, but he was also a uh, mixed race. And I will just um, make this portrait a bit bigger for you. 
as you can see he is quite clearly of um mixed race heritage um he was illegitimate and we think that his mother was uh, a black slave of lorenzo the second um however he was the favorite of his cousin uh, clement the seventh and so clement um when he ousted uh, ippolito made alessandro the duke instead or sorry he made him the lord of florence um, Alessandro was only made the Duke in 32, 1532 by his father-in-law, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. Um, now, Alessandro at one point was ousted uh, by a rebellion, uh, but then he was reinstated and again he was made the Duke. Uh, however, he was um, a well-known tyrant and one of his distant cousins, a man called Lorenzino or Lorenzetto, uh, actually poisoned, or sorry, no, um, assassinated Alessandro. Um, and just to see how he relates in, um, he relates in through the brother of Cosimo the uh, First. And speaking of that line, um, this man here succeeded uh, Alessandro as the Duke of Florence. He was Cosimo and he was a condottiere, which means a mercenary. Um, now, he was made uh, Duke of Florence and then later Grand Duke, as you can see there uh, are the dates. And after he died, he was replaced by his son, uh, Francesco. And Francesco uh, was quite hardline and conservative. He was very unpopular, um, although he did have two daughters, one of whom was the Duchess of Mantua. As you can see, uh, she relates in here. And then their child, Ferdinando, uh, married uh, Francesco's uh, niece, Caterina. So there's a bit of uh, inbreeding there. As well, Francesco had another daughter called Marie. Marie and Catherine, if you remember her from earlier, uh, she was, Catherine was the uh, lover of Hippolyto. Both uh, Catherine and Marie married the kings of France, and both Marie and Catherine were very important queens. Catherine, uh, in fact, was the mother of three queen, uh, sorry, three kings, and uh, she was also the governor uh, for a very long time, and so was Marie. Uh, Marie was also the governor of her son, uh, Louis XIII, with Cardinal Richelieu, and I've made a chart on Cardinal Richelieu um, a while back, if you want to uh, see that. And um, another daughter of Cosimo I uh, married an Orsini, as you can see. And again, that duchy uh, survives until today. Um, and they were related in through this link here. Um, so, yeah, a lot of uh, relations there. Ferdinando then came to the throne. And um, he was the opposite of his brother. He was very kind-hearted and good to his people. Uh, he outlawed many barbaric practices imposed by Francesco and uh, was well known as a good ruler. Um, now, he uh, also was a big patron of the arts. Uh, and most Medici were, as I said earlier. Um, you know, so um, obviously... People like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, they were all related, um, you know, or funded by the Medici. Now, after uh, Ferdinando died, his son Cosimo uh, came to the throne and he was very sickly and weak. Uh, he entered the war of Castro against the Pope. And after he died, um, his son Ferdinando uh, became the Duke. However, his name, uh, sorry, his reign was rather uh, slow and, of course, Black Death was uh, in the middle of it. So a large percentage of his population died, um, I believe about 25%. So um, he was quite unfortunate. And um, he had two other brothers who were important cardinals and diplomats. Um, and then his son, Cosimo III, who I think is probably the ugliest 
uh, Medici. Just um, bring that to the front. As you can see, he's um, not the best looker. Uh, but he came to the throne uh, later on, and uh, he was a very stern and nasty man. Um, he was an anti-Semitic ruler, um, and he was yeah a huge tyrant. He um, allowed executions for really quite trivial offences. Um, and he was uh, not loved at all by his people. Let's change that. Um, now, after his first son, uh, Ferdinando, died, his um, other son, Jean Gastone, um, came to rule uh, Tuscany. However, by this point, there were no other living heirs, and after Jean, Gast uh, Jean Gastone died, um, the line ceased to exist. And just a quick note about these two brothers, uh, Jean Gastone was the opposite of his father. Uh, he was quite liberal and outlawed the barbaric practices that his father had imposed. And Ferdinando was um, a famous Medici, not for ruling, but because he was a patron of the arts. In particular, music. He was a famous musician and funded um, the person who made the piano. So we can attribute the piano to the Medici as well. Uh, Alright, so thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, as you can see, there was another Medici Pope uh, here, uh, although he didn't rule for too long. And um, there was also a, um, a house of Medici in Milan that weren't related uh, to these Medici. So if you ever hear that there were four Medici Popes, that is incorrect. Uh, there were only three. Uh, the other one was just from Milan and had the same surname. Uh, so sorry. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.